Yeah, you've seen something a little different uh, because World Sports Betting now sponsor Waiter to Win as they do have just injected 52 million rand into full racing for the next three years, which is very exciting. And there's so many that will, you know, get the you know upper hand in terms of uh, that sponsorship. And by that, we mean the transformation and grooms and everybody really seeing the upside of that, which is fantastic for horse racing. And yeah, of course, on this show, we're very grateful with well, the... Uh, social media element at Waited to Win on Twitter and your WhatsApp number that's on the screen. Join our family. We'd love to have you at any time. Now, second at turf, we're going to get straight into it. It's a busy day Saturday because we've got World Cup on the go. We've also got a Cape Town meeting on the go, so there's a lot happening. Mo the Man is currently priced up 13 to 10. Looked race over last time until Jet Dynasty got, uh, got him out of the blue, Darren. Yes, Clyde. Um, you look at, I think the third place runner there was on the guest list, who's still battling to win a maiden. Um, but Mo the Man, I think the key here is the drop in trip. I think the mile was stretching him last time out, and the drop back to 14 is going to be ideal from a decent draw. Keegan DeMello, he should get it right. Should get it right. Is the Gimme a Diamond also danger? Um, sure. Joyce Summers certainly running his horses from wide draws, Clyde. This horse has got his work cut out from that draw. Mm. Uh, he is a moderate sort. Mo the man, a lot in his favour. Um, this isn't the strongest of lineups. Um, I don't think he's going to Hollywood himself, but he is having his peak run. He's got Keegan DeMello. He was clear of the third place runner. Fourth horse, I think, came out and ran second or third in his next start, Celtic Rush. Uh, so I think he should finish in the top two, but I haven't banked him, Clyde. I've gone with a little bit of a roughie in the pack of year number eight, Activator. Um, a fair debut, beaten a long way, and then I don't think he was done any favours dropping in trip next time out. He came back to a 1,000 metres. He was just run off his feet. He now goes the seven furlongs, the 1,400 metres, and from a one draw, I'm expecting improvement on his behalf. Okay, so maybe activate a little bit of a shrewdy, but there are a couple in here. We've got bipods. Let's get the bipods on the go, guys. We'll start with Darren first, and then Daryl's bipod after. Darren's going like this. Banker one, banker six, banker one. By one, two, seven. By one, four, five. By banker three. So he finds it relatively easy. He's spending nine rand a bipod. Daryl Marie's going one and eight. By one and six. By one and seven. By one, two, four. By one and five, he's looking for the safer play today. Bankering the three at the back of his bipod, and that will cost 48 rand. Abo on toast. Abo on. We actually ordered the Abo on toast in our studio today. We had a power failure. The kitchen couldn't made it. Couldn't, couldn't do anything about it from down the road, which is disappointing, to be honest, because we just thought, you know, that's why not? It's a nice start for breakfast, but... Daryl Marie, I'll start with you. This also I thought was very unlucky. I watched its first start. It was slow out of the gate. It was weaving its way through. It should have won. Absolutely. She should have uh, won on debut, Clyde. I, I tend to agree with you on that one. Um, will she come out slow again? That's the question that has to be asked. If she jumps on terms, I expect her to win. But, uh, you know, she is inexperienced. Uh, let's hope she's learned from that effort and she breaks well. If she does... I can see the sister to Red Saxon making uh, making a, a, a winning start to her career in her in her second outing. Um I haven't backed her I haven't banked her Clyde, I must be honest, uh because of that reason. So I've gone with keep the fort as the danger. I thought last time out over the miles she moved up very dangerously. Uh she just her run came to an end in the in that final fifty meters. Uh, she's got experience on her side. She should go handy, and I think the 1400 is going to be ideal for her. So six from one, if 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 those that can have a bet in running, and uh, you can see Evo and Toast is in a striking position, I think you can empty out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I suppose she was very far back last time, Darren. She was very far back, and uh, that would be a bit of a concern. Personally, I'm not worried, but what do you think? Yes, Clyde. She jumped awkwardly, slow out the gates. Uh, halfway through the race, I thought she would never run into the money. And she absolutely flew at them. I thought, very unlucky loser. Um, dangers. Keep the fort. The drop-in trip's going to be ideal. But she is limited. And a call to glory. Now, have a look who the dam is. Smart call, the winner of the Met. Uh, this fully improved in her second start. She has had a bit of a layoff since then. So, six to beat one and seven. Okay, that's the play from Daryl Marie's side. He's going one and six by one and seven by one, two, four by one and five by banker three 
by Bank of, sorry, by Field by one and seven. That's the place accumulator. It'll cost Daryl 336 Rand. And then Darren Burrows on his side in his place accumulator. Um, we'll have a look at that quickly and put that perm up and uh, see what that costs from that perspective. Or, that, or Darren doesn't have a PA, does he? No. Okay. That's just Daryl Marie's. Good. All right. That's the latest for the third. This is a pinnacle. Uh, they've got Desert Miracle top of the boards on Friday. We did the show, the one at 13 to 10. That was the price about Desert Miracle. Seven Feather Boas at two to one. It does appear to be the two that will fight this out, Daryl. What price for the Boa starts favourites, Clark? Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Good price, two to one. Can I, can, I, we... can I get a price from you? What price she starts favourites? Well, no, you can't get a price from me because she'll be in great form. So I, I say she will start favourite. Tell me why, though, now because, that you've told me listen that. listen to this. Desert Miracle, Alumite's off, steel shoes on. What oh. does that mean? Oh, something wrong with her feet. What's going on? I don't, I don't know. know. I'd love to know myself, but uh, that has to be a That's big, interesting. big concern. All right. So you're uh, switching? Or were you always that, Feather Boa? Yes. Were you based, always Feather Boa? I was always Feather Boa, but okay. based on that, I'm, I'm going to be big on Feather Boa now. Desert Miracle, obviously, Clyde, she was very impressive last time out. She did pick up 11 pound penalty for beating Captain's Ransom. Captain's Ransom was at the tail end of her career. You can see in the very next start, she got beaten at restricted odds. Um, Feather Boa, on the other hand, is a, a lovely filly. She's on the up. Uh, what is she getting? Is it six kilograms, Clyde? Yeah. Um, I think she's having a peak run. I think the race is going to be run to suit her. Um, I'm going to go with Feather Boa over Desert Miracle and Humdinger for back in third. No, listen, there's no doubt Desert Miracle is top class, but it's an interesting shoe change. Uh, Dar Desert, uh, Darren, <laughs> Desert Burrows. Darren Burrows, what's going on? I never knew the steels were on Desert Miracle, and I don't touch a horse with steel shoes, Clyde. So originally she was my clear-cut first selection. Um, I'm going to have to go with Feather Bow as well. Okay, well, that wraps it up. Then um, let's see, from a pick six perspective, both are covered within one and seven, then one, two, four, then one, four, five, then two, three, five, six, then one, two, three, five, seven, and then those numbers at the back, one, two, three, five, seven, nine, and ten. On to our Protea Stakes race now. Favourite is Amber Rock from the Azzy Stable at 17 to 10. First timer. Not sure what the story is here. I'll find out from the boys in a minute. Twitter, if you're a follower, at Waited to Win, or our WhatsApp number as well, which is on the screen for you to dot down. Send your name and your email address to that WhatsApp. Just send a WhatsApp and then our admin department will be in touch with you. Mr. Burrows, what do you know about the Aussie first time? Because uh, you've told us about one or two before. What's this one? What's going on here? Uh, very strongly fancied, Clyde. But I was very surprised to see her open favourites um, against uh, a decent uh, bunch of juveniles. You got the Africa house that absolutely blew them away on debut. Uh, quick and so smartly. And lucky lad who beat quite a nice field. Uh, on debut so the two terry runners have to go in uh give me another chance was all the rage on debut got collared late he's got to go in uh amber rock let's see how good she is okay it'll be interesting to see i mean it's it's the protest stakes. it's a group three it's not often you see a first time as open favorite and shorten because this also opened bigger price yes her dam won three races over the thousand, Clyde. There's no comment in the front of the computer form. The anti-post market has certainly spoken, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see her drift off the boards come race time because this is a powerful bunch. Uh, lucky lad, couldn't have been more impressive. Clyde, this is always when we were chatting yesterday, you were saying Max, 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 and I was writing down the fourth yes, line. Yes. Max, the magician, won from it. Correct. If you believe in omens, this is always to be with. Uh, the Africa House, another one. Amazing turn of foot on debut. Uh, that form line hasn't really stood up, but there is an indirect winner from there in Fire and Flames. And then the, the uh, his namesake, number four, give me another chance. He deserves another chance. He came to the course with a huge reputation. He gets that three kg pull because he is a maiden. So I'm going to say the seven is going to drift. Uh, I'm going for one, four, and two.
Okay, interesting. It's there's some talented horses in here. If the Azzy horse does go through and win it, then you must know it's top class. Here's a look at the selections for race number five. It's a jackpot Darren going one, two, four, seven by one, four, five by two, three, five, six, and then one, two, three, five, and seven. Welcome back. Now let's talk about this feature. It's the Pretty Polly. It's a Group 3 and it's over 1,100 metres. Betting on Friday when we did the show Friday morning, favourite was number 5, Midnight Fusion at 22 to 10. One Elegant Ice is 22 to 10. I see their joints now. And uh, two ex Exchange Student Darren's 3 to 1. Those are the three top of the board. Start with you. You've watched them closely. Who's most likely to improve? Um, well, I don't like much of exchange student. Uh, it's quite a small filly, one over 800 meters. I like a horse like Leaving Las Vegas. The form line is solid. And I think this filly is going to come on from that debut. The danger will be Elegant Ice, a runaway winner on debut. The part owner, Piet Bunzai, doesn't want to know. Um, then Midnight Fusion from the Terry Stable. We've seen a lot of Terry juveniles uh, win uh, on a couple of occasions, and um, this has to go in. So four to beat one and five. It's interesting you meet, you mentioned uh, leaving Las Vegas, Daryl, because I don't know how strong the form is, but Mist in Scotland and Global Thunder both coming out of the, 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 that form to have one straight yeah, there and after. Yeah, indirectly call me when you and need me. And call me when you need me, or in third and then one yesterday or the uh, other day. I'm not overly excited, Claude. Um, About what, Vegas or Leaving Las, Las Vegas. She was impressive, and she came to the track with a reputation, but I think... She's taken on a powerful bunch of here. Mm -hmm. You know, this was elegant ice, Clyde. If you saw her move to the start on debut, you would have put your house on because she looked outstanding. And uh -huh. She came out running. She was never in doubt. Lovely, solid uh, looking fully. I can certainly see her build up, build on that effort. Uh, there was another juvenile race on the same day. The Colt version, one by Guy Gibson or something like that. Mm -hmm. Her time was four lengths quicker. Uh -huh. So her time was... Uh, fairly decent uh another one that was very impressive was midnight fusion if you watch that race Clyde, she was climbing over them 400 out she had the race sewn up uh, sh i think that time off could certainly see her strengthen up and uh go back to back and this horse number eight Clyde, woman of fame was very very disappointing last time out but you don't know who she was beaten by that was an unraced first timer. And take note they have put a set of blinkers on her and once again she gets that pull in the weights because she's She's a maiden. So, uh, one, five, and eight in no particular order. Okay, that was elegant you're referring to. Did seem to win very impressively in a professional manner. Don't know how strong the field was, but it's interesting race. Here's what we're doing then with all of what you've heard. We're taking a Daryl Marie jackpot with one, five, and eight by Banker three, by Field by one and seven. Race number seven, the Colorado King Stakes. It's a group two. It's over 2,000 metres in the race. There's seven of them that go to the, the post. But they're talented horses, no doubt. I'll give you an indication of what the betting looked like on Friday where Nebraska Daryl was even money. They opened that up in litigation, a two-to-one second favourite. So those are the two. And then you've got Raiden Holland who's in there. Whether it's, you know, we know how talented Raiden Holland is. is trading at seven-to-one. And then ten-to-one and better about, uh, about the others. So let's talk about it. What's the deal? Yeah, you can't have Rainy in Holland based on her last start club. She was doing nothing. She was just trotting in the back, towards the back end of the field. Mm. Uh, but on her day, obviously. Uh, but she's not quite the same filly. We have to be quite, we have to be frank. Uh, I'm surprised to see Nebras as short as he is in the markets. Certain people don't want to know. They've made him the best pets on the card. I don't want to know with regards to litigation. I think he's overpriced. I, b I really believe he should He's be favoured coming into this lineup. Clyde, my reasoning behind it, this is Nebraska was quite busy in Cape Town. So he had racing fitness on his side last time out when they bumped. I know he's got a 2 kg pull in the weights and he's got Richard Free. No disrespect to Diego de Bavea. He did nothing wrong on him. Mm. But um, I really think litigation was in desperately need of that run. Uh, he came back, I think, off a three-month layoff. He looked very big. Last time out, he got beaten by a decent sort, but he was giving him six and a half kilograms. I think over 2,000 meters, Clyde, litigation, this is his trip, whereas Nabras is a mile and a half or two miles. So I'm firmly in litigation's camp to confirm that form despite the turnaround in the weights. 
Interesting. They got close together before, as you know, in a brass and litigation back on the 22nd of February. It's going to be a good race. So, Daryl Marie, big on litigation over in a brass. Where are you, Darren? Uh, Claude, I have nothing more to add. I'm also in the camp of litigation to beat Nebras. Okay, so litigation's the one to beat. Maybe it's worth taking the two to one ASAP. Welcome back, everybody. Let's get on to our next race on the card now and see what we want to talk about. I'll obviously go to Darren Burrows and talk to him about this event where Jet Dynasty is currently 5-2 to two and uh, Future Wolf is trading at 5-2. to two. The two of them are top of the boards. Little Prince is at 28-10 to 10, and then 9-2 to two about number 5 prime example. There are a few in here with chances. We know what Jet Dynasty did in its penultimate start. Um, perhaps last time, nothing to rave about, that, but maybe come back to its best. Tell me more. Clyde, um, what price is Time Spirit? I know you opened 28 to 1. It's now 18 to 1, Mr. Burrows, Time well, Spirit. that's my clear-cut first choice. Wow. Um, now, he's had the three comeback runs after a year off the track. And in his third comeback run last time out, on the inside track over 18, it was too sharp for him. He turned into the straight and must have been 10 lengths back. And he absolutely took off when uh, when he found his stride, the final 200. Now, he was three lengths behind Little Prince on that occasion. Uh, Little Prince had every chance that day. He's a kilo and a half better off at the weights. And the Turfentain stand side track is going to suit him down to the ground. So I'm going for a bit of a roughy here, time spirit, over horses like Little Prince, Jet Dynasty and Future Wolf. Interesting. It's an outsider. Dropped from a 76 to a 62. I don't know what his rating is now, but he's uh, plummeting. What do you say, Mr. Murray? I say we're going to show to him Darren Burrows is roughly in the pack. Time. Because I put the field in the PA. Okay. I can't uh, so we need that. dissect this, uh, this field uh, and come to a result, Clyde, of who I fancy. Uh, I think it's very tricky. We just shot in home time spirits. I think uh, Darren has certainly mentioned the value in the race, Clyde. Okay. He's, he's way overpriced. Way overpriced, uh, time spirit. So uh, was 28 to 1, 18 on Friday, maybe going to start 10 to 1. Let's see. Here's what the boys want to do. They're going time spirit each way, race 8. Right, we're getting closer and closer now for those of you watching Saturday to the Dubai World Cup. But let's get on to this handicap that's run over 1160 meters. I'm going to go to Mr. Burrows first and just quickly get his view on the last race where they got 5 to 2 Orzen Kerr, who was an impressive winner, Darren. Uh, definitely impressive winner, first run in the province. I think this horse could go on with it. We've seen many Tony Peter runners uh, like Stratospheric, two out of two on the high fault. We've seen others too. A uh, Cornwall was very impressive on debut, being slow away, and he absolutely trotted up. Um, Expeditioner is the improver in the race. I think he ran against a strong field last time out. He'll be competitive. So one, two, and seven to fight it out. And uh, Darren, just quickly, this horse that's going to Tony Peter from Cape Town, and do you know anything about it? Storm Dictator, because we've seen those Cape Town horses that land in the Peter Yard, they end up winning. Are you there, Mr. Burrows? Yeah. I'm here. Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, carry on. Uh, yes, uh, he's had the one comeback run after a year off the track. So I'm sure you'll need one more. Okay, need maybe one more run. We'll watch out for that. Mr. Marie, what's the race? What's your taking on the sure. last? Clyde, this was Cornwall. Um, wasn't he mighty impressive on debut? How, how often do you see a horse slow on debut and within a few strides have the race sewn up mm. and never in doubt? That's exactly what he did. So he could be anything, um, but he's been thrown into the deep end of here because these are, uh, there's several in here that are hard knockers. Uh, so it's certainly not going to be an easy task, but he could have a lot more to offer. I like the look of number one, Expedition. I watched his latest replay. Clyde, he only got beat half a length for second. He was right up there. I think he's better over the 1160. And uh, once again, it's a jockey up. He, he now gets the services of Richard Free having his peak run. So I think he brings the strongest form into the race. I'm going to go one from seven. Okay, so there are, a few, I guess, a few in here that have got to have chances. Michael Lazy, when I spoke to him about Cornwall, that's, it's not a sound horse, unfortunately. So they try and get Cornwall as sound as possible. If it's sound, it'll probably win. That's the challenge, is, is what they're having with Cornwall at the moment. But uh, latest, here's the look at what we're going to do. There are a couple of shrewdies in here. And Daryl Marie says, let's try the swinger one and seven.